morning boys and girls. I hope and trust that we are all doing well. I also trust that we are enjoying the holiday. I think we still have about three more weeks before schools can open. It is my prayer that uh, even during the holiday that we will not lose focus uh, with our school work, but more so that we shall have more time even to focus on God's, God's word. Uh, of particular interest uh, is the, the conference that we had two days ago. I hope those of you that attended uh, enjoyed the conference. I hope God spoke to you and that you respond positively to God's word. This morning, we are basically going to revise or to go through the lessons that we learned a few, a few weeks that have gone by. But before we proceed, I'll ask that we turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, O God, that you have granted us yet another opportunity when we can come and learn from your word. We thank you, O God, even for the lessons that we were able to learn in the weeks that have gone by. We pray that as we come to revise, that indeed our minds, our memories will be refreshed. But more so that if we have not made up our mind in saving you, the living God, but by the help of the Holy Spirit, we shall do so. We pray that you may forgive us of our unrighteousness as well. We pray, O oh God, that uh, these things that we shall learn indeed shall have an impact upon our lives, each one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Like I mentioned earlier, we are this morning, just going to go through the lessons that we learned, but uh, I'll focus on one particular lesson uh, so that we we go in, in, in depth of that lesson. And uh, all these lessons that we learned in the weeks that have gone by, basically we are focusing on sin and its cure. Sin and its cure. I think you will agree with me that uh, sin, by definition, is basically breaking God's law or breaking God's commandments. It is basically disobedience, not obeying God's word or not obeying God himself. And in the lessons that have gone by, we saw that sin takes different forms and it comes with its own effects or dangers, so to speak. It's, it's, it's a deadly, it's a deadly thing. We looked at, uh, lessons like rejecting God, where we saw Ahab committing so much evil in the land. And the Bible records for us that Ahab committed so much sin more than anyone else who had lived uh, during his time. We also looked at uh, playing with other gods where Elijah challenged the Israelites on, the, on Mount Carmel to choose between Baal and the Lord. We looked at sin, wounding the conscious, where Elijah approached King Ahab, and Ahab was troubled in his questions. Remember that question, what have you come to do, you troubler of Israel? And we also looked at sin uh, as an example of being a fatal disease, a deadly disease. Remember General Neman when he had leprosy. And he was required to go and wash in a pool. And it was a humiliating experience because he was expecting something very spectacular to be done for him to be healed. We also looked at sin as it bringing death. We looked at sin as going to war with God. 
So then, like I've mentioned earlier, our sin comes in different forms. And we saw in the previous lesson also that sin has consequences. We have reminded ourselves that sin is basically the breaking of God's law or God's commandments. And there we had several examples where we saw how that sin was committed when men and women disobeyed God. In the book of First Kings and chapter 18, this will be of particular interest, then we will seek to answer a few questions that will come from all the lessons that we learned. Uh, let me quickly read that, then we shall apply the lesson. First Kings chapter 18, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So Elijah went to present himself to Ahab, and there was a severe famine in Samaria. And Ahab had called Obadiah, who was in charge of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For so it was, while Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah had taken one hundred prophets and hid them, fifty to a cave, and had fed them with bread and water. And Ahab had said to Obadiah, Go into the land, to all the springs of water, and to all the brooks. Perhaps we may find grass to keep the horses and mules alive, so that we will not have to kill any life, livestock. So they divided the land between them to explore it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. Now as Obadiah was on his way, suddenly Elijah met him, and he recognized him, and fell on his face and said, Is that you, my lord Elijah? And he, has, he, and he answered him, It is I. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. So he said, How have I sinned that you are delivering your servant into the hands of Ahab to kill me? As the Lord your God lives, there is no nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to hunt for you. And when they said he is not here, he took an oath from the kingdom or nation that they could not find you. And now you say, go tell your master Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from you, that the Spirit of the Lord will carry you to a place I do not know, so that I go and tell Ahab and he cannot find you. He will kill me. But I, your servant, have feared the Lord from my youth. Was it not reported to my Lord what I did when Jezebel killed the prophets of the Lord? How I hid one hundred men of the Lord's prophets, fifty to a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now you say, go tell your master, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Then Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I will surely present myself to him today. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him. And Ahab went to meet Elijah. Then it happened that Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the bells. Now therefore send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal and the four hundred prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people, and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, not a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I alone am left a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bulls, 
and let them choose one bull for themselves. Cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood. But put no fire under it, and I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood. But put no fire under it. Then you, then you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God who will answer by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Now Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first for the, for you are many, and call on the name of your God. But put no fire under it. So they took the bull which was given them, and they prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning, evening, till noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice. No one answered. Then they leaped about the altar which they had made. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is meditating or he is busy or he is on a journey or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. So they cried aloud and cut themselves and at their custom with knives and lances until the blood gushed out on them. We shall read further uh, as the lesson unfolds. But in that particular chapter of 1 Kings chapter 18, there we are told how that Ahab had departed from God's law, from God's commandment, by marrying a foreign woman, Jezebel, whom God had actually instructed the Israelites that they were not to marry from other nations. But Ahab, because he lived a sinful life, he disobeyed God, he went ahead and brought in Jezebel. And this Jezebel, the Bible records for us, that brought in foreign gods. And like we said that sin has an effect. This worship of idols did not only remain at the palace, but that the Israelites began to worship idols. They began to worship idols. They forsook the Lord God who created the heavens and the earth. And so God punished the Israelites. Remember how that there was no rain for two solid years. And Ahab was actually, Ahab the king was actually annoyed with Elijah who had prophesied that there would be no rain for two and a half years. And he began to search for Elijah so that the distress could be re uh, removed from the Israelites. And so there we see, boys and girls, that sin has an effect. In fact, there, in the first instance, we see how that when the foreign gods were brought to the palace, this worshipping of idols was not only limited to the palace, but that the entire Israelite nation was actually affected. And that's what happens when we disobey the Lord our God. If we begin to embrace other things other than God himself, those take up his place and they become idols in our lives. Perhaps for the small boys and the little girls, we may begin to say, oh, but I, I am not worshipping an idol. Maybe idols are for big people, but no. Even for little boys and little girls. Anything that takes the place of God, anything that you love more than God himself, anything that replaces God becomes an idol. And we know that an idol does not save. We see here in First Kings chapter 18, that when Elijah challenged the Israelites okay, to pray to their God, he began to mock them, saying perhaps he's in a journey, perhaps he's sleeping. And the Israelites, they prayed. We are taught 
that from morning, noon, and evening, and that bell, the idol, did not answer them. So there, boys and girls, we see that an idol cannot save man. It cannot save you and me. But secondly also, uh, from our second lesson, we saw how that the conscious gets guilty. When King Ahab saw Elijah, remember the, the statement, you troubler of Israel. You troubler of Israel. You who is troubling Israel. And that's what normally happens, boys and girls, when your conscience is guilty. Your parents confront you with the word of God and you begin to defend yourself. Why are you sharing this, this, this word of God? Do you think I am not a Christian? Do you think I am not saved? Why do you want us to have a Bible study? Do you think you are the only one who is holy? We become so judgmental. King Ahab's conscience was troubled when he saw Elijah. And perhaps many of us quickly run to defend ourselves when we are confronted by God's word. Instead of listening, paying attention to God's word and hear what God's word says, but we become defensive. We do not want to listen to what God's word says. We attack even the preacher, the one who bears God's word. We also see that sin is like a fatal disease. We saw how that General Neman had leprosy. And if you remember very well, both the Old Testament and in the New Testament, a leper was regarded as an outcast. And boys and girl, girls, the way leprosy just eats out your skin, your flesh rather, it is the way sin destroys one's life. It is very detrimental. It is very destructive. You may say, ah, okay, just for today, maybe I'll do this. Uh, it's just a small sin, but before you realize it, you are actually an armed robber. Sin has taken a great hold of you, and it leads to destruction. In one of the lessons, we saw how that sin brings about death. And this death we are talking about is not only the physical death, boys and girls, but spiritual death. Because the Bible is clear that we were born in our iniquity, in our sin. And we know that the consequence of sin is actually death. For the wages of sin, the Bible tells us. And so, boys and girls, we ought to be conscious of the fact that if we are playing with sin, if we are allowing sin in our lives, a day of reckoning, a day of giving an account to God will definitely come. The day when God shall bring us to his judgment will definitely come. One of the lessons also we saw how that sin leads to hell. Boys and girls, there can only be two places, heaven and hell, no in between. And so, if we live in sin, our sure place is hell. And so, we can perhaps ask ourselves some of the questions. Some questions. What will happen to children who refuse to turn away? Or, yes, who refuse to turn away from sin? What will happen to children who refuse to turn away from sin? Well, like the prophets of Baal. If, if we continued reading First Kings chapter 18, we, are, we were going to see 
that when Elijah prayed and the sacrifice was consumed, there was a command that those 450 prophets of Baal plus the 400 prophets of his female counterparts, they were actually arrested and thrown into the fire. And that is exactly what is going to happen to boys and girls, men and women, who will refuse the Savior, who will not turn away from their sins. And so we need to go back to the way of finding God. Which way is that? The gospel is certainly the way back to God. We need to pay attention to God's word. That is where we get instructions of how to live a life that is worth of our calling. So, which God are we tempted to serve? Is it the God of this world or the God who created the heavens and the earth? In First Kings chapter 18, verse 21, Elijah challenges the Israelites and he says, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. Do you know why they did not answer him? Because their conscience was guilty. They knew that they were following a false God. A God who was not able to save them like we saw earlier. I encourage each one of us, boys and girls, that we serve this God who answered Elijah. This God who created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says we are dead in our sins. Who can awaken us? One of the lessons certainly we saw that it is only God himself through the Lord Jesus Christ. If we put our faith in him, we repent of our sins. In 1 Kings chapter 18, when you read further, you will see that after that miracle that was performed at Mount Carmel, when the sacrifice was burnt after Elijah prayed, people, the Israelites, repented. First of all, the Bible says they were all in awe. In other words, they were gripped with fear. They were shocked. They were surprised that the God of Elijah had answered. Therefore, there was a command by Ahab himself, the king, that men must repent, that the idols must be brought down. They must be removed from the temple. We see there, boys and girls, that there was genuine repentance. And so, if you repent, if you turn away from your sins, even you who's watching me this morning, God himself, through the Lord Jesus Christ, will forgive you of your sins and who will come you into his kingdom of light. Because we know that if you are not a Christian, you are in the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness is basically the kingdom of the devil. And so I encourage each one of us boys and girls that uh, we turn away from our sins and we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And only on that basis will we be accepted by God to enter his kingdom. I pray that uh, these things that we have reminded ourselves of, that they will have a great impact upon our lives. That we shall not have a chance to play with sin, to reject God. That we shall not continue to live on with our guilty consciences, but that we would have learned this morning again that our consciences can be cleared, that we can be forgiven of our sins and live a happy life because our sins have 
been forgiven. And I challenge you that if you are not a Christian this morning, that you ask God to forgive you of your sins. Amen.